operating with the EPA cover up that now has 50,000 first responders sick and dying. Thanks for cooperating with the criminal Christy Whitman, who told everybody it was safe to go to Ground Zero. Again, you can breathe that toxic dust over the plastics and the concrete and the asbestos. You're a criminal, Giuliani, and you, you should have all those 50,000 responders on your conscience that they're dying because of your negligence. Piece of shit. I worked Ground Zero a week after I was asked to come to Ground Zero by the Union to help do the rigging on the Millennium Century, One Liberty Plaza, and the Federal Building. We put all the safety netting up to keep the glass, the broken glass, from falling down on the rescue guys and all the people in the streets out here. Whitman, EPA director, on the 18th made a statement that the air was safe to breathe. As the EPA director, she had the power to step in at ground zero and make sure every man, woman, helper, people from all over the country that came here had their respirators on. She should have kept these schools, kids in these neighborhoods out of this area for, to make sure, absolutely, that it was safe to come back. No, they were in a hurry to open Wall Street. They opened Wall Street at the expense of thousands and thousands of men's health. This country has gotten crazy. Everybody's blaming everybody else, but bottom line is, Bush is responsible for this. He is absolutely responsible for this. Getting the truth and protecting people are part of the EPA's mandate. But if the air at Ground Zero was safe, why were so many people getting sick? Even some of EPA's own staff doubted the agency's assurances about safety. Among them, senior policy analyst Hugh Kaufman. Mrs. Whitman went on national TV, smiled at the camera, and told everybody everything is safe, and it wasn't. As I say, you know asbestos was in there, is in those buildings, lead is in those buildings, there are the, the VOCs. However, the concentrations are such that they don't pose a health hazard. We're going to make sure everybody's safe. You said that, I think days after the attack, that the air was safe and the quality was not a problem. Well, I didn't say that. We, we uh, the health department has done uh, tests, and at this point, is not concerned. But so far, all the tests that have, we've been we've we've done do not show an undue amount of asbestos. Doesn't show any particular chemical agent that we have to be concerned about. The the accumulation of it for people who are down there can become very very uh, irritating. People whose eyes have been burned, but I, but, I, but I don't think there's any chemical agent that we have to worry about. Anybody with uh, half a brain would probably look at that cloud and say, This can't be good for you. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, when you're called to war, you don't say, Well, I, I'm not going in there, you just go. But what exactly was in that burning pile where the World Trade Center once stood? According to final studies later published by the EPA and other government agencies, a devastating toxic soup 
containing more than 2,500 contaminants. Asbestos fibers, once inhaled, cannot be expelled by the lungs and cause various cancers. Benzene, another carcinogen, suppresses the immune system and can cause leukemia. Mercury is toxic to the nervous system and especially the kidneys. Lead and cadmium are toxic to the respiratory tract and can also cause irreparable kidney damage. Polycystic aromatic hydrocarbons are the chemicals in cigarettes that cause lung, laryngeal, and mouth and throat cancer. PCBs commonly cause severe skin rashes and can also cause liver damage. Tiny particulates in the dust itself lodge in the heart, causing ischemic heart disease, often fatal. Certain toxins had not been tested. There were other contaminants of potential concern, and those included PCBs, PAHs, dioxin, and I believe some other metals. You cannot find what you don't look for. Uh, this is true, and um, the agency could have done a much better job of looking. It's not a health concern. Now, it's not nice. I'm not saying this smells nice. I'm not saying this is nice. But from a real health problem, we don't have to worry. The White House Council on Environmental Quality is headed by James Connaughton, who is not a scientist. He had been appointed to his post by President Bush only months before 9-11. His previous experience? representing large corporations in disputes about cleaning toxic waste sites, working against the EPA. The original title of the EPA's September 13th press release was subtitled, Testing Terrorized Sites for Environmental Hazards. The subtitle after the CEQ's revisions reassures public about environmental hazards. The original draft of the EPA's September 16th press release noted several debris samples that showed levels of asbestos ranging from 2.1 to 3.3 percent, explaining that anything above 1 percent is defined as asbestos-containing material. At that point, the area should have been evacuated because we had a presumed assumption of hazard, and then testing should be, have been done and people allowed back in. Instead, when the statement was released, the CEQ had changed the wording. The debris samples were now described as containing small percentages of asbestos, slightly above the 1% trigger for defining asbestos material. Our work showed that more than 25% of the samples exceeded the 1% benchmark for asbestos. That's not a health-based benchmark. In fact, an EPA expert testified after 9-11 that a half a percent can be just as dangerous as 20%. This one is wonderful. This, is, this was deleted from, from the draft. The concern raised by these samples would be for the workers at the cleanup site and for those workers who might be returning to their offices on Monday, September 17th. So you take out the part where people are told that they need to be concerned. We were told that CEQ had a desire to protect the national security and to get Wall Street open, and that was the reason that the press releases were changed. My name is David Miller. On September 11th, 2001, along with hundreds of my fellow troops, I went to Ground Zero. No one asked us, no orders were given. We went because our city, our country, our neighbors were under attack. And we knew what to do, or at least we thought we did. Our uniforms were torn and soiled. Our resolve was simple, to stay and dig as long as we had any hope to save anybody. I want to tell you about how sick so many of these brave men and women have become. I want to tell you about how the mayor refused to accept the fact that not dozens, not hundreds, but many thousands of us were contaminated, sickened and poisoned by the most toxic combinations of building materials in the history of disaster relief. And that for five terrible years, he ignored that fact. Five years of our family members watching us drop dead. 
They All told the American people the fact is that yeah, to me, we're safe like to breathe.